Welcome back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. We're going to be talking about Airbnb today. And I have become very passionate about this subject. I am now boycotting Airbnb, not for any political reasons. I just Gen it just irks me. Everything that they're doing, everything that the hosts are doing irks me. Now, Airbnb was once a great idea. It was an affordable alternative to hotels. You could stay in a home. You could have more space, be more comfortable. The homeowner could make some passive income. They could rent out their house if they were out of town. It was perfect. Perfect. It was a win-win for both parties. It was a great startup, was totally behind it. However, Airbnb now has so many problems that I don't know if they will ever be able to recover. We are seeing the crash of Airbnb. Now, some of these problems include the insane fees that add up to more than the cost per night and the negative effect that it is having on the current housing crisis. There's even horror stories of tenants moving in and then staying and squatting and refusing to pay rent, refusing to leave the property, and Airbnb and the government is doing nothing. So Airbnb is truly a mess. We're going to figure out what went wrong, but before we do, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. All right, so like I said, Airbnb was a great idea at first. When I, you know, looked up reviews online about why people would prefer an Airbnb over a hotel, all the reasons made perfect sense. They are reasons that I was once very behind. Like one person said, it depends on what you're doing. If my husband and I are going somewhere for a few nights, we are going to a hotel. If we are doing a family vacation, staying for a week, we Airbnb. It is so much easier with small kids. They have their own space. We have a place to cook and eat and a place to relax and unwind. Exactly. Like in theory, it makes more sense to possibly forego some of those, you know, hotel luxuries to have have space for the whole family, especially when you are traveling with kids. And I started to love Airbnbs because they felt like a home away from home. It was a bit more casual and often it used to be less expensive. Like for a period, I never even looked up a hotel if I was traveling somewhere. It did not even cross my mind. Like since 2017, maybe if I went anywhere, if I was on a ski trip with my friends, if I was, you know, going to Savannah for the weekend, literally have not looked up hotels, have not even considered staying at even a La Quinta, and I was a big La Quinta fan <laughs> because you can bring your dogs and I even think about like a cute boutique hotel, Airbnb or VRBO right off the bat. But somehow over the past few years, Airbnb has raised their fees higher and higher, almost to a laughable level to the point that now hotels are more affordable and social media is very much aware of this. One person said in 2018, Airbnb better than a hotel, 2023 hotel better than an Airbnb, agree or disagree. Obviously agree. One guy said agree, the cleaning fees being more than one night stay is insane. Insane. And what is sad is that this is not even an exaggeration. In the slightest, if you look it up, there are hundreds of examples listed online of these fees exceeding the actual price of the place. Wall Street Silver posted this and said, Clown World, does Airbnb even make sense anymore? I have not used it in about two years, but I don't remember it being this bad. Is this for real and typical or just a really extreme example? And then he posted the screenshot. Only Airbnb can turn $185 a night stay into a $450 per night stay because there you have the room rate. And then the special night offer, oh, thank God we're getting $37 off the $225 cleaning fee and then the Airbnb service fee, $52, that is excluding what they then take from the Airbnb host and then taxes. Like how does any of this make sense in the slightest? It is not affordable anymore. And a lot of these places aren't even that nice. You used to go to Airbnbs and it would be like a cute little house. You would see a lot of character, it'd be fun. Now I walk in and they're just like sad, depressing apartments with Ikea furniture. It's like, I would much rather be in a cute little hotel. I would much rather be in a La Quinta versus this. And the fact that Airbnb is adding their own fees on top of the fees that they are already taking from your nightly stay is just insane, which is probably why the hosts are now hiking up all their cleaning fees because that gives them a little extra cushion to make up the money that they're losing from Airbnb taking a huge cut. But it results in it being a terrible experience for the consumer. And the kicker is that even when you are paying that $225 a night cleaning fee, the owner will give you a laundry list of things that you have to do before you move out, or they will give you a bad rating or charge you an extra fee on top of it. It's like, take out the trash, make the bed, put this in the laundry. It's like, I'm paying you $225 and I have to do the cleaning? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I am done. I'm telling you guys, I hate Airbnb now. Somebody commented and said, once upon a time, people were just monetizing a spare bedroom, but now the cleaning fee exceeds the room charge. Why would anybody do Airbnb anymore? It, it does not add up. It makes no sense. And it is going to destroy the whole model. It already has. Comedian Tim Dillon has a viral video because he had a terrible Airbnb experience and ended up getting kicked off of Airbnb, but he sums up everything so well right here. I was thrown off Airbnb. This is a fact. You did not support me on this. I did. You did not. You said uh, he should have done the dishes. This was yeah, your you quote. Done the dishes. Joe. But you shouldn't have been thrown off of Airbnb. Okay. Well, but you shouldn't leave dirty dishes. Joe 
we pay a $450 cleaning fee. Oh. Oh, never mind. Listen, if it's like a $50 cleaning fee, I am a decent person. I'm not going to leave the place a mess. Like, I always wipe things off. I try to leave things tidy. But I'm not going to sweep your damn house after I was... Oh, God. Anyway, sorry. I just need to let I'll let Tim finish. <laughs> they do this scam now. They call it COVID cleaning, which is th- fake because regular cleaning and COVID cleaning are the same thing. Cleaning is cleaning. Is You're a- not going in there with... Ha- That is such a good point. A lot of this started with COVID because they're like, we need to desanitize everything. And they still have that listed. Like we have to take extra precautions and you have to pay. Are you Lysoling the place? What are you doing? It takes 30 seconds. It's 15 cents. What, what is, I'm not paying $400 for that. Are you walking around with some like disinfect? No, you're not. You're not. You're just trying to make extra money. Like I admire the hustle. But frick no, not falling for it anymore. Why didn't you just clean the plates? Because this is a vacation. Are you supposed to clean the plates? I don't know what the rules are, but I don't like the service if that's the case. <laughs> I want- You feel like you should be able to leave Not if plates. I If I pay $450 <laughs> for a cleaning fee, you should, and, and the thing is there were two lesbian women and I mentioned that <gasps> and that's why I was kicked off Airbnb because they thought- Because mentioned their, their Because I, I mentioned they were lesbian and they, they had a horribly designed house and they should have- Maybe he has a gay guy or someone to fix it. Oh, it's so good. We're kind of like moving on, like beyond the point, but you just, guys, just listen to him rant. Well, as a gay guy, what have you done? What would you have done, rather, to fix it? Well, all the furniture, well, you couldn't sit in. It was like art pieces. Uh, all of the furniture was like, it was like a wait little. A you couldn't sit in or Tony Hinchcliffe couldn't sit in? Tony Hinchcliffe is a bird. <laughs> that is an excellent point because I have seen Airbnb listings where it's a beautiful house. Remember, once upon a time, Airbnb used to be cute little cottages, things with lots of character. Now you go online and it's like, do, do not, not sit, sit on, on the, the furniture. furniture. You, you may, may not, not go, go in, in this, this room. room. Do, do not. What, what, you're renting out your house. You don't want somebody to sit in that chair? Move the chair out of the house. You are a business. You are a rental. I get it. If you have an antique, move it out of the house. Anyway, if you want to watch the whole saga, there are multiple videos from Tim talking about this. I think he has part of it in a stand-up special. It is so good, and I support him in all of this because it is the principle of the thing. And it kind of cracks me up that Joe was trying to be on the opposite side of the argument because, yes, I get it. Just, like, do the dishes. But, again, on principle, it does not make sense. Like, imagine you're paying insane cleaning fees for this house. $400 $400 a night and then you get a message, mm, you, didn't do the, you didn't do the dishes, I... This is not something I should be getting this upset about, but this has been festering for a while. It has been bubbling. We need to make it make sense. Somebody commented and said, I'm with Tim on this one, $450 cleaning fee. They are cleaning everything. And with that amount of money, they can afford to hire a couple of cleaning ladies and they can clean everything. It's really not that big of a deal. No. Guys, I am way too amped up about this. Like it's Airbnb, it's ridiculous, but my like blood pressure is rising. I actually need some Bond Charge products to help me calm down. Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every single way. Their extensive range of premium products help you sleep better, perform better, recover faster, reduce inflammation, and so much more. Hopefully, they can reduce my stress levels after thinking about Airbnb. From blue light glasses to red light therapy, Bond Charge products help you naturally address the issues of our modern day way of life effortlessly and with maximum impact. Now, you guys know I love my blue light glasses. I wear the red lens ones every night before bed, but I also love their new infrared sauna blanket. The infrared sauna blanket has so many benefits, and it works by using infrared light, which heats the body directly rather than in the air around you like in a traditional sauna, which means that you get the same benefits at a lower heat, but of course, you still get a great sweat which helps you flush out all the heavy metals and other toxins. It raises your heart rate to that of physical exercise. So you're actually burning calories while you relax. You can burn up to 600 calories in just one session, which is what I love to hear. And they listened to their customer comments about wanting an easier way to clean the sauna blanket. So they have rolled out a premium moisture wicking waffle cotton fabric sauna blanket insert, which is designed to fit inside of your sauna blanket to absorb your sweat, help you keep drier and make the post sweat session cleanup even easier. Bond Charge ships worldwide, offers exceptional customer service and comes with a 12 month warranty. If you want to check them out, go to bondcharge.com slash cooper and use code cooper15 to save 15% off at checkout. Again, that is bondcharge.com slash cooper and use code cooper15 to save 15% off. This reminds me, I one time went to an Airbnb and they said that there was a sauna. Did not work. They also said that there was a grill we could use. Did not work. I was on a cabin weekend wanting to, could not even use any of the facilities and I am paying 
How much money? Don't even get me started. But anyway, moving on from the insane cleaning fees, this next issue is probably more of an issue with state laws on tenants versus landlords, but Airbnb is still a contributing factor and I'm angry at them, so I'm gonna continue being angry at them because they are not doing anything to help. But we are seeing a trend of more and more people renting a house on Airbnb or other platforms and then the tenants just refuse to pay rent, they refuse to leave, and somehow they're just getting away from it. I was living in LA and I was working at a production company, oh gosh, this was my junior year in college, so uh, beginning of 2020. The production office was in Venice. It was in like a little old house on the canals. And there were all these issues with the houses on the canals because a few squatters had moved in. Now these houses, millions and millions of dollars, guys, in Venice Beach, California, extremely expensive. There were multiple, multiple articles about houses in this area, in this neighborhood, that while the owners were trying to sell it, a squatter moved in while the sale was happening and the government would not kick the squatter out. So now this new family had bought bought a house, was paying a mortgage, could not move in because there was a crazy squatter living in their house. That's California for you. But this is also happening through Airbnb and they are not doing anything to fix the problem. Here's one headline. I want my house back. Washington homeowner lives in a van while a deadbeat tenant lists house on Airbnb. This tenant not only kicked out the homeowner, making him homeless, but now he's listing that home on Airbnb as his own. And it's all just allowed. Like, how does any of this add up? It don't make no more sense. Even if the major problem is with the states allowing this, California and Oregon and Washington, Airbnb is not doing anything to help. They know that this is not the owner of the house. I'm like, sure, listen on the platform. Give us that, you know, $52 Airbnb fee per night. Sounds great. Kick the person off of the platform. He is illegally renting this house. Now to top it all off, if the absurd fees weren't enough and the squatters were not enough. There's also very, very good speculation that the popularity of people buying houses for the purpose of using them for Airbnbs, only for Airbnb to now become a dud, may have serious implications on our already ruined housing market. Here's a tweet about this. The Airbnb collapse is real. Revenues are down nearly 50% in cities like Phoenix and Austin. No shit, because nobody wants to pay $400 a night for your cleaning fees. So we're all going to hotels. Ain't nobody got time for that. Watch out for a wave of forced selling from Airbnb owners later this year in the areas hit the hardest by the revenue collapse. Highlighted two of these, Austin, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, down 47% and 46%. Just crazy. Here's another one. This author went on and tweeted under this one and said, number one, what's scary for the U.S. housing market is just how many Airbnbs there are. Data from all the rooms shows 1 million Airbnb slash VRBO rentals compared to only 570,000 homes for sale. It creates a huge home price downside if struggling Airbnbs elect to sell, which everybody is thinking in the next two years might happen because they cannot afford to be paying mortgages at our interest rates when the Airbnbs are not even filled. I don't wanna act like an expert on real estate or on this topic, but logically, this all makes sense. Houses that first-time buyers and young families could afford are not only swept up by companies like BlackRock, but they're also quickly being picked up by hosts who wanna do a quick flip and then fill it with crappy IKEA furniture and then list it for $200 plus a night with a $400 cleaning fee. No wonder we have no inventory. No wonder when you go on Zillow, there are barely any houses for sale and they're all extremely expensive with an 8% interest rate. Now that people are not renting these houses, as as these owners expected because there's an oversaturation and the platform sucks now, these houses are going to be dumped back in the market if something does not change. One person commented under this and said, it used to be good when it was people renting out their second home, a shag pad or board home bodies with an extra room. And then people bought houses and joined Airbnb to become hotels with lower overhead. Exactly. And I think the only solution is what is happening right now. It has to crash, it has to collapse. Like people are walking and saying, nope, screw this, I'm done, back to hotels I go. People are angry about the fact that they can't buy a house because there's just Airbnbs everywhere. The rental market inflated way too quickly and now with insane nightly costs and cleaning fees, not to mention our terrible economy keeping people from traveling and even wanting to go to these Airbnbs, a lot of hosts are going to have to give it up. And some places are already forcing hosts' hands in order to balance the scales like in New York City where Local Law 18 just ordered that all short-term rental hosts in New York must register with the city and only those who live in the place that they are renting and are present when somebody else is staying can qualify. And people can only have two guests. So rather than having a big apartment that you are just renting out in New York City, you have to live in the apartment and rent out a part of the apartment or an extra room and you cannot have 10 people staying in there at one time. In general, you guys know this, I am not in favor of government intervention. I stand by the fact that government meddling often makes situations worse. But let me know what you think about this because a lot of people that agree with me are very excited about it, are in favor of it, and it 
is happening in a lot of cities, and maybe this is what needs to happen. I don't love that this can have implications on normal people who maybe own one Airbnb and we're actually good hosts and we're just renting out their bedroom and now have to go through all of these government hoops and register with the city. I don't like that, but I do like the idea of them cracking down on huge investors that are subsidized by the government in the first place and are taking advantage of this opportunity, which then hurts normal people who are just trying to rent an apartment long-term or buy a house for their family. All of these rentals, all of these Airbnbs and the lack of for sale inventory in the market right now just really reminds me of you will own nothing and you will be happy. Shout out to the elites and the World Economic Forum for ushering all of this in. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.